Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting order at 6.03 p.m. Uh, if everyone would join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Emergency exit for this room is located in the back of the room. Well, hello everyone. As always, if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, please email us. Um, tonight we have uh, CSR with us to present, and uh, Greg Pokey is going to start the presentation. Um, and we just need to bring your presentation up as soon as. Discussions to date, and uh, so will be the, the CSR PowerPoint. There we go. All right. Me. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Thanks for uh, letting us uh, uh, come before you tonight. Uh, what I wanted to do today was just update you a little bit on our next steps that we've taken since uh, we did the uh, DCS presentation. Uh, maybe that was a month or, or two months ago. Um, so kind of, you know, a snapshot of, of the planning process. So right now we're, we're at, the, at the point where we're reviewing the, the high priority or the unsatisfactory items that we identified in the building condition survey. If you remember, that was a kind of a, a, kind of a big um, uh, scope of work uh, throughout the district that we, uh, we identified. And our process now is trying to refine that down to a manageable size for, for a capital project. So uh, we're prioritizing that stuff for the high priority or unsatisfactory items. Uh, we're also starting to consider some of the other uh, district needs that might not have been included in a, in a building condition survey. Um, and we're working with, with Turner uh, to put together budgets uh, for those scopes of work. So that's ongoing right now. Um, uh, we've got documents over to Turner and they've been in. Uh, participating in all our meetings to start and establish uh, some budgets. Um, and then as, as that comes, the next point will be uh, really finalizing our scope. Once we start looking at budgets and we'll see what we can or cannot uh, afford in the project, and we'll finalize scope and budget and bring that all uh, before the board and, and the public. Something's happening when I get there. Okay, so um, <clears throat> when we last met, we had kind of a, a, a long running list of bullet items at each building. Uh, this is essentially that list of items uh, to start with that's been pared down to the items that really rose to the top of, of some priority work. So um, some of them you'll see some consistency in each of the buildings, uh, but we are looking uh, at Albert Lansing, Abram Lansing, sorry. Um, Playgrounds and equipment and surfacing. That's going to be a typical uh, theme throughout the buildings. Uh, pavement and sidewalk reconstruction. So that's just natural deterioration of those surfaces that, that at a certain point can become uh, tripping hazards and, and things of that nature. Uh, the exterior stair and railing replacement. Um, that one has an S next to it. And if you recall from the building condition survey, items that are identified with an H or an S are health and safety or structural. So those are items again that would rise to the uh, to the um, to the highest of, of the priority list. So exterior stairs, exterior walls. That's really the uh, it's called EFIS, but we'll call it the paint of the building. Uh, there's some areas where that's starting to uh, deteriorate and come off. We'd want to address that. 
uh, partial roof replacement, uh, corridor door lock sets. Again, that's going to be a common theme throughout the building. And that's really uh, security provisions and keying systems throughout the building, as well as um, card access. Um, <clears throat> some exterior doors here, just because of the condition and some, some deterioration over time, and elevator refurbishment. Let's see if this works. Yep, okay. So we also have some mechanical equipment uh, uh, to be replaced, some rooftop units and some exhaust fans, uh, some pumps and some sanitary piping, firearm system, and PAs, again, are consistent themes that you want to, um, not necessarily wholesale replacement in each of the buildings, but improvements in each of the buildings. And then uh, here we have a need for uh, uh, reconstructing an ADA ramp for uh, handicap accessibility. So <clears throat> those are kind of items that were identified in the building condition survey. But then at, the, at each building, we have a category that we are calling other at this point, right? So there's some other things that in discussion seem to raise, rise to the, uh, the top um, for things that we might consider. It's not necessarily that all of these things would be in the project, but things that we're currently considering. So the cafeteria, uh, there we have a need for some additional seating. We don't know that this is necessarily a building addition, but it may be reconfiguring some space adjacent to the cafeteria so we can improve or expand the seating area. Um, casework isn't one that's really covered in the BCS, but throughout the building, there is some deteriorated casework that really should be replaced. And those are countertops. And, and cabinets, that's that's what we we would uh, consider casework. Um, there are some support spaces, um, special ed spaces, psychologists. The, the, the spaces are in the building, but most of them are occupying uh, either uh, spaces that are too small or actually classrooms that might be a full-size classroom where you have one office. So this is really kind of trying to reconfigure uh, those spaces so they have better adjacencies and they are better efficient uh, use of space. Uh, the nurse's suite. Here again, was looking at kind of reconfiguring that and expanding that. Um, some deficiencies kind of come up when you start talking about COVID and trying to provide um, separate separate rooms for um, for students and and, and staff. <clears throat> Harmony Hill. Um, again, we're looking at the playground and and some of the equipment and surfacing at the at the building. Um, so that playground equipment here again, I think, would include uh, some basketball goals and things of things of that nature. Uh, pavement and sidewalks again. Um, improvement of drainage at the athletic fields. These are fields that are really, you know, used by the high school, but they're kind of on the upper level adjacent to Army Hill. So we put them uh, them here. Uh, window replacement. There are a couple windows throughout the building that that don't function properly. Some of them there's uh, are deteriorated, starting to rot. So we replace those. Um, so masonry restoration, that's kind of where you get uh, brick repointing and, and just uh, deteriorated brick. It might be cracked brick, uh, just restoring that stuff. Uh, carpet, replacing carpet with VCT, uh, that's throughout the classrooms, and uh, replacing VCT flooring. Uh, again, the corridor door lock sets, a uh, consistent theme. Uh, the elevator as well. Uh, the mechanical equipment here, we have some air handlers, um, some cabinet unit heaters, and some exhaust fans that we'd look to replace. Fire alarm system and PA system upgrades again. So here, um, <clears throat> you know, space is really, really a big need here, storage space. Um, you know, there is this kind of the large central commons there. So there's been a couple of things tossed out there. You know, could we, could we put a glass wall between the corridor and that central area? to kind of separate that area a little bit better. Right now it's open and it's kind of a, uh, a catch-all area at this point. Um, it is kind of nice for assembling small groups, but um, you know, it could be, could be separate and, and maybe ex um, improve its function. We also consider, do we protect the floor in there? So now we'll double the size of the space by creating a second floor um, up top. So um, again, a consideration. Um, currently, there's a, a conference room off the main office that's been utilized for, for some resource uh, rooms. There's the conference room within the, within the library that's been taken over for some of the smaller um, kind of uh, 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 resource and um, accessory spaces. So, you know, could we, could we find some better locations for that and then restore conference rooms um, back to their original intention? So there are locker rooms in the building adjacent to the gym that really don't get used. 
Uh, there is, a, as we said, a need for storage. So potentially could we convert one of the locker rooms into gym storage, convert the other locker room into um, you know, some smaller classroom or resource, resource type spaces. Um, <clears throat> so again, just kind of renovating the existing space, not creating any, any building addition. Um, and the last one here, we do have a, we have a generator there. Um, so far in our investigations that we probably could put more stuff on the generator. So if we have the capacity, we might as well try and try and maximize the load on the, on the generator if we can do it in a cost effective manner. <coughs> ben Skike, um, some drainage structures, that's catch basins and that's stormwater drainage out in, in the parking lot. Again, we have playground equipment and surfacing, uh, pavement reconstruction and sidewalk. Um, Replacement of the fence um, at the, at the court and some court upgrades with the uh, with the equipment. Um, you know, there's a photograph right there, and the top photo there is the trench drain. You can see the cracks and the uh, weeds growing in the court um, front door. Uh, they're having a drainage issue where water driven driven rain is coming in front door and and kind of soaking that front uh, lobby there. So we look at that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the roof ladder, that's just a safety concern, the way that existing roof ladder is configured. Exterior masonry restoration, again, on, on the brick walls, uh, carpet and PCT again, and some interior walls, um, restoring some of the interior masonry walls. Door door locks, again. Um, the, one of the elevators, we look to, uh, to upgrade that. HVAC controls, that's kind of the energy management system that runs the equipment. So that would be an upgrade uh, to that system. Emergency lighting and exit signs, uh, fire alarm system and PA system again, and again, an ADA curb ramp. This is to get out to the playground at the front of the building um, where they don't, meet, they don't meet code or they're a little uh, deteriorated. So some other improvements there. Uh, at the at the basement and the sub basement level, there are some rooms that historically have been used. Um, they're, they're really storage rooms. They have been occupied in the past. They're currently not occupied. But um, you know, if they were going to be used, and if we wanted to maximize that space for instruction, we'd want to improve the ventilation and lighting, and actually the uh, uh, fire alarm system in those areas as well. But um, if they stay in storage, then we, we probably leave them as as they are. Um, the basement storage, there are some large basement storage areas down there as well that we would want to look to improve the, uh, the ventilation in there. Uh, here again, we have a need for additional uh, capacity in the, in the uh, seating capacity in the, in the cafeteria. Um, this one's going to be a tough one uh, to address, but, uh, but we know the need is there, so we're, we're looking into that. And uh, restoring the library. So currently your library has been... Uh, is being used for, is it pre-K or is it a K? The library itself, is, the former space of the library is being used for instruction and the library has been displaced. So um, that would be a good a good thing to get out of its current location in the, in the corridor, or at least make provisions to make that, uh, that location more uh, compliant with exiting and things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> middle school, again, we have some drainage Structures out in the out in the parking lot, pavement and sidewalks again, uh, masonry reconstruction again. That's repointing uh, primarily out at the upper level. The parapet is the area of wall that extends the exterior wall that extends above the roof line. So there are some uh, some walls up there that should be uh, repointed. Uh, the fire escape at the back of the building, uh, coming out of the uh, um, the library back by the by the uh, cafeteria. That fire escape should should uh, be addressed. Uh, partial windows again and, and screen replacement. Um, exterior walls again, masonry restoration, uh, more at the lower, uh, the lower level of the buildings. Um, small area, we have done a lot of roofing over there, but there are some areas of roofing and some flashing still that we want to address. Um, again, carpet and VCT flooring. Uh, some interior plastic walls, <coughs> or plaster walls rather, and plaster ceilings. Um, the photo on the top there shows some of the plaster in the library that that was damaged prior to that roof being replaced. So the leaking issue has been solved, but we still have some residual uh, plaster damage inside inside to address. Um, 
lock sets again in the le in the elevator. Uh, gym bleachers, the bleachers have been already uh, removed, so we're going to look to put to put bleachers back if we can't procure them in another another manner. Again, some mechanical equipment, uh, AHU, that's the air handling units. Those are the things on the roof that provide the, uh, the ventilation to the large spaces. Um, some more plumbing, heater, plumbing piping, plumbing fixtures, uh, that's uh, sinks and faucets. Fire alarm again, uh, ADA improvements for, for access. Uh, the building condition survey actually just, gener just asks a general question about can you access everywhere? So any place that we can't, we would we would list that. Uh, the PA system again. <clears throat> so when you get to the other category here, a lot of these items uh, listed, uh, it's kind of a domino effect. So there are three or four spaces um, that, you know, uh, functionally, we might want to move one or two, uh, the nurse's office, one of them, move the nurse's office, and then there kind of becomes a domino effect of moving uh, two or three, uh, two or three items, but there's, you know, um, there's a, a need or at least a, um, uh, a solution. If we move the nurse, we can expand the guidance and we can kind of be more efficient with this, with the space. So um, starting through the list here, the removing the stage, uh, currently we don't use the stage for performances. Um, there is some gymnasium, uh, some fitness equipment up there now, and it's kind of a catch-all space. So one thought was if we remove the raised, uh, the raised stage and put that at floor level to the gym, we could provide access directly from the gym into a smaller fitness type room uh, that could be monitored by the, by the uh, gym at the same time. And you wouldn't have an accessibility issue of somebody needing if they were, were wheelchair bound going out, coming up a ramp to get to that space. Um, there are built-in risers in the music classroom. One thought is to remove those. Um, kind of makes the room a little bit more uh, flexible um, if you don't have built risers. Um, <clears throat> it might get more, act, maximize the space a little better. Um, currently in your uh, tech and your, your tech room and your, uh, your uh, STEM classroom, uh, there, there's two rooms. One is kind of set up like a shop and the other one is more on the, on the tech, uh, tech side. Uh, be improving one of those rooms, potentially, um, you know, re-imagining re, uh, the use of the shop and then maybe finding some of that space um, for another another purpose. So looking at the tech and the, and the steam room or STEM room. Um, I touched on relocating the nurse's suite. Uh, that would be closer to the front door. That allows us to expand the guidance suite and kind of reconfigure how that, how that space functions. Um, cafeteria. Uh, Again, a difficult space to address there due to the multiple levels. Um, the cafeteria, currently the serving line is, is within the cafeteria and it really takes a lot of, a lot of the space. Um, you know, so we're looking, again, this is kind of where you get into the dominoes, but there are spaces adjacent to the cafeteria that we might be able to take to expand the seating area of the cafeteria or maybe relocate the serving line um, so we get more of a larger open area for seating but then there are spaces that might have to move that are currently adjacent to the cafeteria. So there's a faculty room there. Um, and uh, I can't remember what the other one's use was. There are two, two, two large rooms there. Copy room. Copy room. Copy and work room, that's right. Um, high school. <clears throat> um, again, Stormwater and drainage throughout this, this property is a bit of, a, of an issue on the athletic fields. So it's listed here in a, in a couple of locations, but um, you know, just improving those structures and, and the drainage uh, system that we have up here, um, as well as pavement and sidewalks. Um, <clears throat> there are some specific things listed here under the kind of the build, building condition survey items, like the track fencing and uh, some of the field events could be improved. Um, the baseball field, infield backstops, fencing around, fencing around the soccer field. So we have have a need for kind of improving all the uh, the athletic fields around the buildings, even if they were to stay in their in their current configuration. Um, the building itself, we have some masonry reconstruction, uh, repointing. There's some uh, window heads where at the at the head of the window, the steel is kind of deteriorating and rusting. So we want to we'd want to address that. Um, a couple of uh, exterior doors, 
Um, some windows again, um, the older windows down at the at the back the back end of the building. Um, masonry restoration on the on the exterior walls again, and some some roofing here as well. Um, windows I already I already mentioned. Uh, spray foam roofing uh, with uh, you do have some spray foam roof. Um, and that's a system that can be recoded a couple of times, but once it gets to a certain age, you look to, to take that off uh, and we look to replace that with, uh, with a rubber roof. Um, there are some plaster walls in here that need some, need some work. Again, carpet and VCT flooring, uh, classroom casework, um, specifically in the science choir, band, art rooms. Uh, those rooms in general are a little, um, they've been, uh, uh, They've been well used, so they are they are ready for some improvement. Again, even if they were to stay in their current location, um, quarter lock sets again, uh, the elevator, mechanical system uh, controls again a similar topic. Um, there are a couple of locations where we have electric panels in classrooms, um, you know, just out in the open. So we'd look to uh, to lo relocate those panels um, into a more secure uh, location, even though the panels are locked. Not, it's not necessarily a safety, immediate safety issue, but I just prefer not to have panels out like that. Um, and then the PA system um, improvements. Again, some, some ADA access, um, concrete pads at the unit ventilators, that's just a provision uh, to help keep uh, grass clippings and dust and things from getting up in the, um, the unit ventilators when they're very close to the, uh, to the level of the, of the, uh, of the ground. Um, so a couple of things on the site, because we kind of started to look at this, you know, really holistically. So there's a couple of, a couple of things, um, you know, that the front main parking lot here, um, vehicle queuing becomes an issue uh, where traffic is backing up out, out, of the, out of the property and we need some additional, some additional parking. So we look to um, reconfigure that, that area right up front. Um, you know, and then under consideration again is the construction of a synthetic turf field, which could address or would address some of the uh, site drainage issues um, on the site. Um, if we were to put that in, you know, uh, so we're talking about a track um, and a field with lighting uh, for main competition, a okay, competition field. So um, there's been several um, variations of concepts um, utilizing alumni. Um, stadium as the turf field and other concepts that have not used the lighting, utilizing just the, the open area for the turf field. So um, again, everything is under under consideration. Um, <clears throat> then we get into, and, and associated with that, if we were to construct a synthetic turf field on a portion of the property, then we would look to improve the other fields, which might just be stay in their same configuration, but there's drainage improvements or maybe even the configuration chains uh, as with a natural grass uh, field, but the, uh, the, the um, drainage gets improved. Then we get into some of the rooms, kind of like we just talked about, the band and coral and the science labs. Again, those spaces are, are, are well used and, and, and tired at this point. Um, we don't have a real technology or innovations lab or anything of that nature here at the high school. Um, something to consider going forward that's been brought up is that you want to try and expand some of the programs that might be happening at the, at the lower levels up into the high school. Um, no real space to do that now. Again, that might be a longer term um, discussion, but um, it's been brought up. Um, and then there are some, <clears throat> some exterior bathrooms uh, that are used for game events. So you can, you can, the public can come in from the exterior. We'd look to improve those, improve those facilities. Okay, that was a quick breeze through all the buildings. <laughs> um, so where are we in our timeline? Um, you know, the timeline is, is tight. Um, you know, we, we are there in red that we are talking today about kind of the high priority uh, scope items as we, as we currently have identified them. Um, coming up next week, we have a district-wide uh, facility planning meeting. Um, we'll be representatives from each of the buildings and um, uh, different teams, um, athletic department will be there as well. So that meeting will kind of go through all this stuff with them 
and again bounce off uh, get get some of the uh, the feedback from them. We've had discussions with with probably all of them previously, so um, it's kind of a follow up uh, discussion with them. And then then the following week we'll get back here again. Um, at that point, we'll probably have some numbers uh, that Turner that we can share um, from Turner and start to craft, you know, what the magnitude of these of these high priority items look like. Um, so we can start to um, to scale that back, um, and then the, the the following meeting you're going to see this a lot in the next two months. Um, the following meeting would be one where we could where we could really say, okay, now we've 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 cut it back to what we think the the project size could handle given the the um, the aid and the and the um, the retiring debt. Um, so we'll start to talk about that. Uh, again, to update you all on, on that on that status, and then the next week would to meet a May vote. Then the March sixteenth vote or meeting would be where the um, resolution would have to be passed by the board to go to a capital project, uh, and you would take action on on the seeker process, which at this point is really a a type two uh, action, which is uh, really no 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 environmental impact um, required. Um, <clears throat> then. Really, uh, from March to May, that was you know you guys that would have would have passed that resolution, so that they can really go public um, with the community outreach um, and uh, trying to get the message out as to what what the project include uh, leading up to the vote in May, um, May seventeenth with your with your budget vote would be the capital project the referendum, and then after that, um, you know we would get into finalizing our schedule for. For our, our work uh, to, to really refine the, the uh, design and get that to the state for permitting. So that process, um, you know, we take uh, work in again with the district to, to really refine what that scope of work is. We have to issue the documents to SED and they issue the building permit. From that point, once the building permit is, is issued, we can go to bid and you guys can even award contracts. So there is a bit of a, a process there. Um, and then once we, we will publicly bid the project and go to construction, so. If I could just add, so at the uh, building uh, level committee, um, they consisted of uh, administration, staff, parents, um, coaches, the athletic uh, committee and uh, the community members. Um, we know and we explain that our, um, our project scope uh, would not be as large as all the um, the needs and uh, and ideas. We thought it was important though to really begin to hear so that we could also plan for the future. So, okay, if we can do this now, then what would be in the next phase? So part of the next steps and with the facilities planning committee and and with you will be to to see what we can do, but then also to thoughtfully plan for the future. Thank you. Are we allowed to ask questions? I mean, I, I just have a couple questions on the presentation. Um, what is, um, I, I guess I'm kind of curious how expanding parking at the high school is going to be create a better traffic flow out of here. Um, I'm, really, I'm confused. Okay. When we show you the picture, you understand. But um, <laughs> now, other than cutting through somebody's yard, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no it, it essentially um, the queuing lane that you have that comes in now, it, yeah. kind of, it kind of makes that longer and, and pushes it farther yeah. towards. It kind of squares it off, mm -hmm. so you kind of come in and you would go to the right to come back around to go to the left. So you don't go straight into the to the high school. You kind of go around. Yeah. And by going around that centerpiece becomes a larger area for parking. I'm going from memory. I think you said we were picking up somewhere 75 to 90 spots or something like that. Which is which is great, but those now those extra spots still have to exit. Yes. You know what I mean? yep. Through the same roads that are there now. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm well, just confused about that one. This some problems we can fix. Some problems we can. That's what I mean. But I don't know how more parking creates a better traffic flow. Is what I'm saying because they still because they still are going to back up leaving at my point. Well, the, um, you're absolutely correct. If the same number or more cars are trying yeah, to leave, more. this was addressing the cars when they're coming in. 
and queuing to get into the property okay, not that that okay. they won't back out into the into the neighborhood as they come in for pickup and things of that nature. So, um, and then the, the parking was kind of a I'm not going to say a, a byproduct, but um, the intent at the in the plan wasn't how can we maximize parking. It was more how can we solve the circulation, and then the parking increase was almost a byproduct of that. So basically, it was entering versus exiting. Yes. And I, I Yes. So exiting, you're right. You're still going out one point, yeah. um, you know, and um, you'd still have even maybe a little bit more, some more cars. Right. 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 That was my, that's yeah. reason for my question. And my second um, question was, um, it was Queensbury Middle School, the principal, the principal or somebody was here from Queensbury, right? The superintendent. Superintendent. And their middle school um, <laughs> results Blockers. I'm kind of curious, um, do we know how that's going? Because I taught middle school here, and I know how narrow those doors are with those lockers. And my understanding is they started using the lockers again here. I understand both sides. The kids need a locker, but yet Queensbury discovered they did, and now problems were solved by widening those corridors and removing those lockers. And nobody so, likes change, but I wonder how that's going. So, uh, very the lockers were removed and the corridors were and you know by by default again got wire was at the high school where that happened okay okay and um and to my, to my understanding that's still that's still working fine um, and 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 the reason is they don't now have enough lockers give everybody a locker if they wanted them so because we took we were we were putting lockers in in the project and we decided to take them out so um I haven't heard that it's not working there. Um, you know, so and I know some students have lockers and some don't, or that nobody does. They, they are still lockers in the building, okay. and I don't know if who's using them right now or not. We did an, they did an exercise where they um, everybody had to take their stuff home for Christmas, and they zip tied all the lockers. And if you were in the locker, you had to film. And what I've been told is that when kids came back, only seventy-five kids wanted a locker out of the 600 lockers that we had in the building. Um, so I, that was two years ago. That was pre-COVID. Right. So I don't know currently if that's changed at all. Um, it just seemed to make sense, especially when I think our middle school, you know, just it's a lot of congestion there because the halls are shorter. Yeah. You know, I just, I want to know. Yeah. Um, you know, that was and the, and the, in the course of that project, the areas where we took the lockers out primarily were areas that we were renovating. So we were already building new corridor walls. So it was just kind of take, you know, take them out. Um, and so um, I guess what I'm saying is when we get into a project, if the project is just take lockers out, it become pretty invasive, right? Because you're dealing with that whole, in order to maximize that space, you're rebuilding that whole corridor wall. So, um, there's a lot of times there's a you know when they take if the locker is recessed into the wall that is you don't gain anything by just taking out the locker other than you don't have kids standing there right blocking traffic yeah <laughs> you don't have the doors open i mean there's an argument for both sides i just yeah. wondered if that was considered okay thank you sure any other questions oh you'll get mine <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm up to two pages of those, right? Okay. <laughs> you can send it. In, you can send it. In, you can send them in advance too, so that we have time to think about what the answer is. <laughs> so nothing is like you know nothing is drive by any of our buildings. Wow! But I think it's really important to say that we have to pay attention to the structures and foundations because we can't if we don't fix them now, it becomes an project it becomes a lot more costly and then we have something to build on. So thank you for I know this is not going to be great for you to present. When it when it's done we will so that's uh, <laughs> right. it, it helps out. I mean, you know we need to get around the laws we just need don't need to get the phone call that it's hot or cold or <laughs> Oh, no. no.
Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. We appreciate your work. We just spend even more time together. We're going to wait. So, um, thank, thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Next up, our school business official, um, Stacey Matthew. And you have the cover. I have the cover. So the executive budget was released. I talked about it in real high the last time we met. Overall, the statewide increase is over 7%, um, mainly attributed to uh, and there's additional of grant, grant opportunity embedded in the, in the state budget. Uh, but for us, the foundation aid is the, is the headliner. Um, the executive budget, I just want to remind everybody, this is the start of the negotiation process at the state level. The actual budget deadline is April 1st. Um, as the proposal stands today, we would see a 13% increase in foundation, um, you know, over $2 million. So it's huge to, to propose city schools. It's, it's huge for us. Um, so obviously we're thrilled with the, with the proposal. <laughs> uh, no change in the expense driven aid formula. So again, that's good news. But then some of the key initiatives uh, for the governor, they're really green initiatives. So there's uh, grant opportunities uh, with NYSERDA. Um, and there's also a push uh, to go to electric buses. Um, I think the year is like 20, by 2027 is, is the goal. Um, so those, those are some of the initiatives um, at the state level. We will have Assemblymember McDonald join us on March 16th, and he'll give us an update on the state budget and how the process is going. We'll probably know a little bit more in a few weeks on, on where that's headed. I did do a, a summary of um, the, the proposal against what we had budgeted for the current year. The, the big story for us is foundation aid. Um, so it just, it, it goes to show just how underfunded we've been for many decades. Um, so if this comes to fruition, um, it would just be huge for the district. So fingers crossed. Could I just mention one thing, yeah. Stacey, as we, as we go through this um, and as we, uh, so right now, as you know, we've met with donor had some initial budget committee meetings that we're, we're still in the process. So uh, it's still, um, uh, it's, it's a balance because yes, there's an increase and then we have to talk about, so how do we plan over the next few years, but then keep in mind that we have to maintain in, in future years and um, be cautious so that, uh, and, and we've gone through this in the past before, then all of a sudden there's a funding cliff. So, so that's one thing as we're doing um, our, our planning uh, for keeping in mind and keeping it in the forefront and continuing the return on investment process throughout mm -hmm. everything that we uh, we look at, everything we add, and even things we've already added. Thank you. Very well said. I'm listening. <laughs> Uh, there's something. So there's a couple of slides. This is directly from what you should have shared. All right, well, I'll talk about the tax calculation. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one with the yellow highlights. It's the one with the highlights. We must have done. Yeah, something's going on. You know what? Thank you. 
Somebody made it fancy. <laughs> so preliminary tax gap calculation. Now this is a little bit different than I've done it historically. Normally I would give you a number right now, but we have some key data that's pending. So I'm going to talk about it more high level and give you an understanding of what it's going to look like without sharing the exact number because it would change and confuse people, I felt like. <laughs> so the preliminary tax cap calculation. So there are several items that we already know. This is like a, a nine-step calculation. So the tax base growth factor that's published uh, by the Department of Taxation. So we know that that's 1.0019. That's down from last year. It was 1.0032 last year. And that's basically the percentage differential in the uh, the full value of the tax uh, properties over the prior year. And then we also know the allowable levy growth factor. We know that that's 2%. So that's it's lesser than 2% of CPI. So we know those items. And we also know that there's no ERS or TRX exclusion this year. So those are all the known items. So we've got some fluctuation happening uh, this year, uh, particularly with the uh, fiscal year 2023 pilot receivables. So we have three changes happening in pilots right now. So there is actually a sale of the property, uh, Watersview condos. And so those properties will be on the tax roll for uh, July 2022. Um, so that pilot will be coming off. So that's a recession. And then we have, we just actually received paperwork uh, a couple days ago for a new pilot. Um, Coho's limited to, it's again housing. Um, and the calculation is based off a percentage of rents. So that's the estimate that we need. We don't have anything to go off of right now. So that's, that's the item that will change this. And it'll be um, a reduction in the levy. So um, and then we also have one that's pending litigation that we have an estimate for. So those are the three uh, pilots that are uh, changing and um, we'll have more firm data within the next couple of weeks. The second item is the capital exclusion. So um, there's several components to this. It's, uh, it's uh, the anticipated building need um, offset by um, the uh, bond payments that we have. So that's, that's known. Um, so the timing, I call them cap, um, chapter 97 project. So that's after uh, the point in 2011, uh, depending on when the paperwork is processed, the aid uh, could be deferred and it could show up on the aid run. Um, and so that's the case for our two uh, mini projects that we just had. It's the Harmony Hill Boiler Project and the Middle School Group Project. So that information has gone to um, our financial advisor, Dr. Rick Timms, um, his company, and he's going to run those figures and then provide us uh, with those figures. And then we were also waiting for the BOCES piece with the ADA test this afternoon. Um, so those two items, pilot receivable, just want to make sure that we have the best estimates that we have, and then the capital exclusion, um, just making sure that we have, again, the best figures possible. So I'm expecting it to be, from what I know right now, it's just over a 1% reduction, but I'm expecting it to be closer to a 2% reduction uh, in the levy. So what does that mean? It means that the actual amount of taxes that we can collect will be lower this year, uh, this upcoming year, than in the current year. So prior year levy was just over 17 million. It was 17,089,321. It's going to be around 16,8, uh, 16,9, I'm estimating. Um, so what does that mean for revenue? 340,000-ish uh, difference. So. It's a good year to be seeing an increase in state aid. 
<laughs> to offset that. So uh, other estimates and provide the exact numbers the next time we meet, but at least I have an understanding of what it's gonna look like. So frustrating that through no fault of our own. Right, right. right. We're already starting in the hole. So this, you know, 13% foundation A increase is already cut. Um, but like you said, it is a it's a really good time for us to be getting more funding, right? Yes. So with the capital project uh, planning, I just want to remind the board to that um, by the end of the year, we'll want to take action to um, to move an allocated fund balance to the capital reserve that the uh, voters had authorized in 2018. So uh, we had up to five million over a 10-year term. We already moved one million. The recommendation is going to be at least 1.5 and potentially more. Um, so we'll want to we'll want to do that by by June 30 of this year. And so that'll be part of the discussion process when we're planning for the capital project. We also do have um, the smart schools fund money. So something like uh, the PA system that could be funded uh, through an amendment to to that. So there's there's some other funding sources that we have. Uh, that we'll, we'll tap into as we go through the, the scope of the project. Any other questions for Stacy? So it's a, been a uh, busy month of committee meetings. So uh, Mr. Martinelli is going to have an update on the technology committee meeting. So our, our technology, uh, district technology committee met on January 6th. Uh, Mrs. Snyder, thank you. Um, Mrs. Giller are our board representatives, and thank you for your help. We certainly appreciate it. And at the at the onset of the meeting, and the last couple of meetings, we try to uh, focus our minds um, on the kids in the classroom, sitting at the desk, and work backwards. That's how, how we try to approach uh, these things. And so, we had a little questionnaire about what our kids are, our kids are learning explicitly in school in regards to technology. And uh, it was we had some very nice examples. We had some teachers there who gave some um, great examples of the things that they're doing in the classroom quite consistently, certainly using Google School for Education. But we also we also have some some work to do. And as 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 we do that work, that's going to lead us into our technology plan, which I'll I'll, I'll update you in, in just a moment. But um, do our kids have enough technology literacy skills? And again, are we teaching those in the classroom? Are we giving them enough opportunity for collaboration, which is a, a great part of technology learning. You can't do uh, one without the other. And um, are we practicing innovation? And, and that could have something to do with a Chromebook or a technology class or certainly even art class or music class. And so this, this um, our technology committee does try to look past, again, something like a, a Chromebook, which are super valuable. Um, we, uh, thanks to Sylvia and, and Stacy, we have updated our disaster recovery plan. We have a nice uh, solid uh, draft that was uh, given to our um, committee. And uh, th that's important because that was something that we were identified on, on an audit that was lacking. The, the one uh, that we had previously, it was it was very dated and it wasn't usable. And this is something that we need both for um, insurance. This is something that um, we need to uh, give to BOCES. But I'd say more importantly, it's just good sense. If something happens, we need to have the right information in the hands of the right people. And so having that at the ready and having it updated annually um, is something that we're, we're going to do now, and I believe it's in a great place. Some districts even post a redacted version on their websites. We can consider uh, doing that. Of course, we're not going to give people our account numbers. So um, that, that, that might be something that we decide to do. So another piece of that is a two-step verification. We're doing a pilot, all the administrators. Um, we do have some teachers. Our friend Scott over there, I know, is, is, is helping us out. And uh, it's really been, been going well to make sure that the people are, are logging in appropriately um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're not opening our stuff.
access to malware, spam, and, and, and all the other things. And so um, we, we really wanted to, our, our goal was to launch this to all of our staff in the beginning of February. We're actually waiting for some more keys to come in. And what that means is some teachers are going to potentially use their phones, and um, some will provide a, a USB key. And um, we're, we're piloting them both right now. But, uh, those security keys aren't quite in, but we're, we're almost ready to launch. And I think it's going to put us in a, in a better situation. And again, many districts have already gone down on this road. And if they haven't, they're going to soon. Uh, our, our technology plan, I'm so glad that Stacy mentioned the Smart School Investment Plan and the PA system, because that's what we've been doing as we're working on our plan. You know, we, we had our, our previous three-year plan, which is ending, but in that plan, even three years ago, we said we know we need these things. And we haven't bought all those things yet for lots of good reasons. We didn't want to overbuy, we didn't want to underbuy, we had to shift the money somewhere else. So uh, what we're doing right now is we're going through and purchasing the things that we need to purchase next. Our oldest Chromebooks from the elementary schools and the Chrome cards, uh, also in the seventh grade, we know we need to replace those. They're not, they're not going to be supported by Google anymore, and that's okay. They're old, they're really old. And so we're going to update those first. We're going to use the existing funds that's already allocated. And that means we don't have to change the old plan because it takes a long time to change that plan. We have money in, this, in the smart schools investment for security for doors and some, um, some uh, new, new um, door code access. We use that money. Again, we're going to set that aside. And so what we have left, then we'll do an update. And, and hopefully we can save some of that money to replace Chromebooks in the future. We're trying to be really thoughtful and coordinate the different grants because we do have technology monies in many different Grants. We're really trying um, to bring them more together than ever before. And so we have a solid two or three year plan. So we're kind of excited about that. Um, and then we have uh, we had to do a digital equity survey. And so that was put out to all parents. We did use the power of Parent Square. And I'll, I'll tell you, you know, um, right now there's almost 1,900 kids in the district. You know, a little, a little shy of that. And we, we had almost 1,400 parents answer that. Four times. <laughs> and so, but what's, what's nice about that is I'll tell you that that's, it's a 72% response rate. And that's one of our highest response rates. And when we didn't get enough people responding, we got a lot, uh, we even made some phone calls. And so we, we, we really did a grassroots effort to try um, to nail this down. And without, without throwing too, too many numbers around, um, I'll tell you that um, in our, our district right now, 27% um, of families said they don't have a device. We deploy devices to 35% of those families who absolutely need one. So th that's where we want those numbers to, to be close to each other, and, and we're, we're really close right there. Um, I would tell you that 92% of our families, and this was a, a surprise for me, but I think because of the pandemic, it's been growing and growing for lots of reasons. 92% of our families have high-speed internet in the home, and that's not a hotspot. And, and by the way, that device is not a kid's phone. It's, it's a, a PC or, or a Chromebook. So we have to work on 80%, and again, we've done some grants for some hotspots. We have in the central office. We've been handing them out where, where appropriate, so we're going to try to get to those 8% and get that as close as possible. So um, in, in, in taking the pulse, we, we have some work to do, but... We, we've also reached some goals. We've also, you know, it's, it's affirming that we've done some things right, and we've put um, as, as many devices in the hands of kids as possible. And, you know, we're, we're looking three years ahead. So I, I hope in March, uh, we'll have a few more updates uh, for you and we'll even be farther ahead. Those are our present percentages. I, I'm, I'm really impressed. I, I'm shocked at that. I, I mean, I just, that, that's great. <laughs> I think sitting in that meeting, I think sitting in that meeting, what shocked me the most was the amount of original students who came forward and said they don't have internet access. How quickly the district, you guys in the district, reacted to that and you know, started to solve that problem. Just you guys, that was quick and, and amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you, uh, Dan. So we thank you so much for your your leadership uh, in this area, and uh, Stacy, you as well.
So I wanted to next talk about our career education committee meeting, and uh, there's a slide there somewhere. <laughs> um, so, uh, so uh, we had our first meeting with school business and city uh, partners, and uh, Mark Pascal is not here today, but uh, I think he was very pleased with the with I wish he was here so he could, he could talk about it. We had uh, counselors, teachers, administrators, and we had some uh, community and, and city partners. We had uh, Josie Seaman Graves, our city planner, uh, and uh, we had this is Lumbar, Kathleen Lumbar, the mayor's secretary, who will uh, help us with collaborations, and Jeremy McDonald from Costa Conso. Um, our next step is to reach out to additional partners in various career pathway clusters. So we will have um, uh, different uh, businesses represented. So we um, we did an activity, uh, it's back to the future, but where we look at where we are currently in 2022, and then we talk about where do we think, where do we wanna be in 2027, five years from now, and then what did we do to get there? Um, so as we really laid out where we are now um, and put it all together, we, uh, you know, you can see that there's a lot of um, career awareness and career readiness activities throughout the district, whether it's through a JA at the elementary and middle, the use of Naviance at the middle and high school, um, field trip speakers, our transition coordinators, so where we wanna be in 2027 is to really make sure, so first of all, that we have a systematic approach K-12 where a career awareness and a readiness is embedded throughout the curriculum, um, where there's multiple opportunities for students, where parents are uh, engaged and informed as well through um, career interest uh, profiles. So I will share, I will share the whole, uh, Set strategy session with you, but uh, uh, I had a lot of fun. So, and uh, thanks to Aaron Hill and uh, Dan Martinelli being on the committee, as well as uh, Becky LaForest. And Becky's already getting me information from other places. So, uh, thank you so much. Any questions on that? Sounds great. I'll say it for Mark, we're so excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, finally, and I said it was a busy month, we also had our um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, sorry, committee uh, meeting, and we started with uh, building share outs, um, post high school and post middle school, uh, being no place uh, for hate schools, which is sponsored by the Anti Defamation League. Um, we talked about professional development and other activities um, occurring in other buildings. Uh, the high school, as they mentioned during the um, building leadership team presentation, uh, is doing a book study on grading for equity. And so we've been talking about, um, you know, uh, looking at that, uh, and spreading that further. And then we have uh, subcommittee meetings because there is really, um, there's really a, a lot of different areas. So um, professional development and um I will uh, be on that committee, curriculum and instruction, Dan will be on that committee, and uh, uh, engaging students in student access, and Margaret um, Giller will be on that committee. Um, so I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, our, our committee members, so diversity, equity, and inclusion is uh, Margaret Giller, Pete Annerley, and Renee Snyder. So, so thank you. So um, a lot in that area, and again, as we have these conversations and work together with the committee, really finding a way to um, make sure uh, we're systematic and make sure there's equity throughout the district. So if we have this opportunity or program in, in one area, then we'll be um, you know, looking at sharing it with the other areas as well. So, Lots of good stuff. I mean, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. Lots of good Does anybody on the board have any uh, questions or discussion about any item on the agenda? Nope. 
Any community member have a question or discussion item for anything pertaining to the agenda tonight? Erin Hill. Thank you. Um, thank you for hearing me. Um, I just wanted to let you know that we have been looking for so long for social work. Applicants who were good and consistent and felt like they would fit with us. I didn't break out after their first interview and not call back or any of those, <laughs> any of those strange kinds of things. Um, and the woman, Trisha Kins, who is on the agenda today to be the social worker at the Holy Middle School, um, was just phenomenal. And I have to um, thank Peggy for bringing Christina Mahoney on with us for um, helping us with the resources and policies because um, she had the idea of putting things on Indeed, and they were all like, uh, Indeed, everybody has to be certified here. But um, she put it on Indeed, and this Trisha um, responded and said, She's been a social worker, she's a licensed social worker, she really wants to be in school social work. And um, and so I called and talked to her, told her, You know, you're, you're close, but we need a school social worker, you have to be certified to work in a school, and basically, you have to do all the mandated trainings through New York State that we all have to do to be educators. And by the time we met with her less than a week later on the first virtual interview, because she was living in Rochester, she had finished one and a half of the trainings. Wow. And now <laughs> at this point, um, two weeks later, or two and a half weeks later, she has finished the training and her certification application is with the BOCES expediters to get her certified as a school social worker. And she's really driven, she's working well with our team and we interview. It's really exciting. And then we have next week at the beginning of the week several social work applicants for the high school position that are in the second round. So it's like we, we turn the corner here and it's really exciting and it's going to be very dark and like that. Thank you. Yeah, Mrs. Mahoney is wonderful at her job. She's uh, really an outside of the box thinker, and I'm really, really excited that it produced results for us. And this, uh, and she sounds like Patricia sounds like she's a great fit for the yeah, yeah. So thank you for that. Anything else? No? Uh, does anybody have any open to like to discuss? No. And can I get a motion uh, to adopt the following resolutions for February 2nd, 2022, business agenda, item 6A through E, and item 7A through K. Second. <coughs> Mr. Jackson. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Snyder. Yes. Mrs. Carey. Yes. We have just accepted the retirement of Holly Smith. Holly Smith is a longtime uh, teacher at um, Van Sky Grade School. She was actually there when uh, I was the principal at Van Sky. Um, I'm, I'm older than her, so Holly, it's, it's okay. But I just want to thank her for her four years of service to the district. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to Life Touch for the donation to be used for PBIS at the middle school. Much appreciated. Any comments from members of the board on anything else? Any comments from the audience on anything? No. We don't have calls here either. The dates for future meetings uh, are February 16th here in the LDI live stream and March 7th here. Also, and live stream. Um, can I get a motion uh, to enter into the session to discuss matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, promotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation? I Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Fionn? Yes. Mr. Snyder? Yes. Mrs. Carey? Yes. We do not expect to um, return the public session. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you.